Hello, ghouls, and welcome to Brave the Basement. I'm your host, the ghoul that rules. And I'm your co-host, Black One Jack 2. If you enjoy getting a little scared, ghost stories, haunted houses, a believer in the supernatural, or maybe even a skeptic wanting to look at things from a different perspective, then this is the show for you. So today, we will be talking about one of my favorite topics, Ouija boards. Man, Ouija boards? Ouija boards. So uh, recently... I posted my uh, one of my Ouija board experiences on Reddit, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and share this story with you, and then uh, we'll talk about it. One day, while being dragged around against my own will to a fun day sarcasm of yard sales, I stumbled across a Parker Brothers Ouija board. The price tag said one buck, so I had to have it. That night, I invited my cousin over who lived across the street so we could play with it. We were very skeptical that it would work since it was a Parker Brothers board. So we were laughing when we lit our candles and turned the lights off. We got into position and placed our hands on the pointer. We sat there giggling, not taking it very seriously. After about 15 minutes of making fun of the entire thing, we made an oath to not move the pointer and see if we could actually get this thing to do something. We sat silently for about 20 minutes and suddenly the pointer moved about an inch. I asked my cousin if she moved it. And she swore that she didn't. She then asked me if I did, but I didn't move it either. After a couple of rounds of blaming each other for moving it, the pointer moved again. This time it just kept going back and forth over and over, spelling out H-I, H-I, H-I. I said, who's there? The pointer then moved, spelled out J-O-E-Y. My cousin's mouth about hit the floor. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I said, your name is Joey? The pointer moved to the word yes on the board. I then asked if he wanted to talk to us. The pointer again moved to yes. I then asked, what would you like to talk about? The pointer moved again and spelled Y-O-U. I asked, why did he want to talk about me? Joey went on to say that he felt that he always talks about him to other people and wanted to show us a magic trick. I said I would love to see his magic trick. And as soon as I said that, the bed sheets on my bed got pulled down onto the floor. I asked Joey if he pulled the bed sheets off the bed and he said yes. I said to him, that's a cool trick, what else can you do? He went on to say that he wouldn't do any more magic tricks until I answered a question. I said I would answer any questions he wanted if he promised to do another magic trick. Joey then asked me if I liked to ride bikes. I told him yes. As I was going to ask him to do another magic trick, the pointer started to move, move again, and he asked me if I liked to play video games. I said yes. And then I asked him to do another magic trick. We sat there for a few minutes and nothing happened. I asked again if he would do a magic trick. Just then the candle blew out. I asked Joey if that was his magic trick. The pointer moved to no. I asked if he was going to do a trick again, and it moved to no. I asked if we were still talking to Joey, and it said no. I asked where Joey was, and it spelled G-O-N-E. I asked, who am I talking to? The pointer moved to no. The board flew into the air like someone just flipped it off the table. My cousin and I ran out of the room screaming. That must have been really scary. Yeah, so well, we started out talking to what was obviously uh, a young person. And then out of nowhere, the person was gone. And someone else had came through and just wasn't answering questions. Just, you know, we still thought we was talking to Joey. And I said, you're going to do another magic trick. And they're, no. Uh, we still talking to Joey? No. Do you know where you played this? Yeah, I played it at my dad's house. Oh, at your dad? I thought I was. I thought you were gonna play at your grandma's house or something. No, I remember I said I wasn't doing that at grandma's house, but immediately after this is when I started experiencing the shadow people when I was sleeping. So this is what I let in. And the big mistake that we made is once the board was flipped into the air. Uh, 
kind of imagine, you know, when someone's trying to get out of a Monopoly game and they're losing, so they just flip the whole board out and they walk out. That's kind of what happened. The board just flipped up into the air like someone had just threw it. And we freaked out and we ran out of the room. And since we did that, there's at the bottom of the board, it says goodbye. And that is how you close the channel. So once you start this ritual and you open that channel, I said before that it's a very wide channel. And what that means is you can let just about anything in from the spirit world. Be it a ghost or a demon or or whatever. Midnight man. Yeah, I mean that, that's that's one way. And when you don't say goodbye, you don't close the channel. So that is why I started having experiences with the shadow people because I didn't close the channel. Have you ever closed the channel? Oh yeah, I've closed the channel before. I you you learn quick. Trust me. You know you don't make that mistake twice. But that was my first real experience with the Ouija board. And I posted this one on Reddit. Um, and, and a lot of people seem to like the story. So I obviously wanted, I talked about Ouija boards before. So I definitely wanted to do a show about Ouija boards. Do you think you're ever going to like touch another Ouija board again in your life? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. I, I don't have one. Um, so I, I mentioned in the story that this was a Parker Brothers Ouija board that you can go buy at Walmart, okay? For like 10 bucks, right? It, they're pretty cheap. Pretty I cheap. I was looking at them just the other day. I don't even remember what the price was, but they're pretty cheap. And we were laughing about it at first because we didn't think it was going to work. Because well, I mean, come on, it's a it's a store bought game. You know, just just like you buy a Monopoly game or, or any other game that you play, you could go to the store and buy this thing. You guys didn't think it would work. No, obviously not. And then, because uh, I had seen homemade Ouija boards that people would make themselves. And I always thought you had to go that route. So I didn't even think this thing would work. And it did, which was shocking. Absolutely shocking. Uh, Do you think, like, I have an idea. Do you think uh, we'd get ourselves a Ouija board? Uh, sometime we record ourselves talking about the Ouija board, having a fun night. Do you think see that in the future? Yeah, it's something we could talk about doing, but um, it's it's one of them things you got to have a lot of patience with. Uh, you got to sit there. It's best. The best way to play the game is usually you want to have one boy, one girl, and somebody off to the side writing. What's being spelled out because in the moment it gets hard to concentrate on the words that that the ghost is trying to spell because you have a yes and a no and a goodbye at the bottom. But other than that, it's just the alphabet. So they're literally spelling things out. So if I would have put and I, and I paraphrased a lot of the conversation that we had with Joey, you know, where, where I talked about where he went on to explain this or went on to explain that. So th this wasn't a three minute thing. This lasted about an hour and a half. We were talking with Joey and in my story, I'm just hitting the main points. Um, Cause if I would have put everything that he would have spelled out, you, you know, it took a long time. Cause, so it's one of those games that you, it's not going to take 10 minutes. You're going to be playing it for a very long time. Now, have you ever heard of automatic writing? No. Do you know what automatic writing is? No. So you have people that are, um, they have ESP, they're psychic, and they can kind of put themselves in this trance and they'll take a piece of paper and they just start writing. And usually they're communicating with uh, someone from the spirit world, a ghost or, or whatever it is. And a Ouija board happens to be a form of automatic writing because you're still moving your pointer. Mm -hmm. Okay. But when you, when you're locked in and focused, um, like I said, it's automatic writing. And I've always believed that everybody has some sort of psychic ability. Um, the Ouija boards are 
a lot of people have, have done them. A lot of people have had a lot of success using these Ouija boards. And, you know, like I said, most people believe that it's just a form of automatic writing. So that's so you're communicating with spirits and whatever is in that wide channel, I'm guessing. Right. And they're coming through you as you're moving these pointers around. Now, some people don't believe that. Some people believe that it's the ghost that's physically moving the pointer. Like, I know some of the, the rules, like, you want to keep on the, like, I don't really, it's like a triangle shape, right? Triangle yeah, shape well, yeah. On, with, like, on, a glass, and you put your uh, finger on it, right? Yeah, you put, you can put one hand, you can put two hands on it. Uh, e- either way, it don't matter. But it will move around the board and spell things out. That's why it's a good idea to have someone. Have a writer. Exactly. No, I'm not sure on the rules, but I, I thought always everyone would have to apply who is there. That's what I always thought. No, it's perfectly okay to have a have a writer off to the side. Um, it's just you want to at least have two people uh, with their hands on the board. So I mean, it's real simple. The, the rules are very very simple. Um, you don't have we we didn't have a writer. We had to keep track of it ourselves. It is distracting um, because you're trying to because there's no period right. So if they're telling you a big long sentence they're just giving you letter after letter after letter after letter after letter and you're trying to figure out exactly where the sentence is beginning and ending or is this letter part of that word that i'm trying to figure out that's why it's best to have a writer Mm -hmm. I, i understand that so is there anything else about about the ouija board that we need no just remember to say goodbye. Just remember to say goodbye. You want to say goodbye because you're going to, because that closes the channel. It shuts it off. It ends the ritual. And you say goodbye, right? So you actually control the pointer to say goodbye, and it closes the channel. And it was funny because uh, after I posted the story, I got a message through Reddit, and someone said, well, you know, you didn't say goodbye. So... And so the whatever you let in probably flipped the board on purpose so you couldn't close the channel on them. Now, I could have picked the board up. That's what I should have. I should have picked the board up and just went to goodbye and it would have closed the channel, but I didn't do that. You ran off. Yeah, I ran off, freaked out, because we're thinking we're talking to a, you know, someone who obviously had the mind of, of a young kid because he was asking me, you like to ride bikes and do you like to play video games and do you want to see magic tricks? Because to this spirit that we were sp- speaking to, his name was Joey. You know, he was wanting to show us things and he thought it was real cool that he could do all these things and it would look like magic to us. And that's why when the candle blew out, I thought it was Joey just blowing the candle out. I wasn't, we wasn't scared of Joey. It was a really weird feeling. It was almost comfortable. Talking with Joey. Mm-hmm. It was, was there, do you remember feeling like this pressure? You know, you know how we talked about like in grandma's house, how there was that pressure you felt? That presence. That presence. Yeah. You, you could feel that something was there. Um, it was not a bad feeling though. You know, you, you didn't have that sense of dread that would come over you. It, it, it felt very comfortable. And the odd thing was when Joey left and whatever else came through and we didn't know it at first, I didn't feel that right away. Not until uh, the other spirit said Joey was gone. That's when, so when I asked where Joey was, I, I still wasn't worried yet, but when he spelled gone, I started getting nervous at that point I started getting scared and then when they flipped the board over that was it that was just icing on the cake we're out of here not playing again but oh we played again <laughs> <laughs> and I think we're gonna play again soon but we didn't play um we didn't we didn't play it right away we were freaked out and I I did some research because I thought the whole thing was going to be a joke to Focus, begin with. Focus. 
Well, yeah, because it was a it was a Parker Brothers Ouija board. I mean, this thing isn't gonna work, this right? Thanks for four year olds, eight year olds, yes, yeah, six eight year olds. And so I didn't think this thing was gonna work. I really didn't, and it did. So that was my first experience with a Parker Brothers Ouija board, and they work. So with that in mind, when you play this, if you get a Parker Brother Ouija board, you need to take it very serious. And you need to study and learn everything about it before you, before you start playing a game like this. Because you don't know what you're letting in. And that's the thing. You have no idea what you're letting in. Since the channel's so wide. Right. So you, you got to be extremely careful. And I just err on the side of caution if you decide to play this game. Now, if any of our listeners out there have got any neat Ouija board experiences they'd like to share with us, definitely send us an email. We'd love to hear from you. We'd love to put it on the show, talk about it, featured on the website. Uh, before we get off here, I do want to give a shout out. Uh, today, I had to go to the store and I ran into one of my cousins. Not the, not the cousin that I played this game with, but one of my cousins. And uh, she told me, she goes, I've been listening to uh, Brave the Basement podcast. And in the very first episode, I talked about one of my aunts who got very sick and was uh, awakened by Mr. Sellers, the ghost, inside my grandmother's house. It was her mother was the one um, who had that experience. And she said, you know, um, my mom listened to it and she said that she remembers that very well and uh what's weird is she's never had that dream again like she was falling into just a pit of darkness so uh, i thought that was real interesting that i ran into my cousin today and she told me that story so uh shout out to my cousin hey cuz uh thanks for listening to brave the basement so in order to continue growing the show we are starting a flyer campaign if you'd like to help hang flyers in your local community, send us an email at bravethebasement at gmail.com and we'll email you a flyer. If you'd like to become a Brave the Basement ghoul, be sure to share this show on social media. Or you can go to bravethebasement.weebly.com and for our YouTube listeners, uh, it's right there in the description. We got a link and sign up for our newsletter to get all the latest news and updates when each episode has been posted. If you have a ghost story you would like to share with us, you can reach us at bravethebasement at gmail.com. Your story could make it on the show and be featured on the website. If you have an eerie ghost photo you would like to share, please email us and include a description, and your photo could be added to our photo gallery. And that brings us to the end. We hope that we brought you just a little fright. And remember when you were up late at night, and you hear something in the other room that just doesn't seem right. It's okay if you need to turn on the light to protect yourself from things that go bump in the night. I'm your host, Ghoul That Rules. And I'm your co-host, Black One Jack 2. And I hope you join us again. Until next time.